are you guys in the process of making decisions right now? Obviously, with Jace, Jace Bruce's um, opt-out day today, we looked at the PP groups. He's saying back hitting. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys, uh, you know, worked out on when all this is going to happen? Well, we have we have in his case, you know, forty eight hours. So um, we actually just got off a long phone call right now with a lot of people centered around the roster. So we, those conversations are happening. Um, you know trying to get different points of view and everyone's you know able to weigh in on different things before uh we make a final decision and when these kind of uh, decisions happen obviously you're a former player so mm -hmm. you're very you know attuned to the fact that this is you know player's career how does one handle it especially with veteran players like Detroit or Bruce um as best you can I mean try to be transparent where you can be um uh you know, there's always a compassionate element that, uh, you know, I think it's important. And, and I think we do a good job of never taking it lightly when we are dealing with somebody's livelihood, but also understand that this is our job to make this call and to make difficult calls. And we'll do it to the, the best of our ability and, and try and serve our team and, and individuals as best we can. We go next to Sweeney Murdy. Go ahead, Sweeney. Aaron, do you have anything um, further on Justin Wilson at this point? When he might start to throw anything like that? No, he, he won't throw for at least a few days. Um, you know, hopefully by the end of the week, uh, he'll start back on, on throwing again. Okay. Um, it's been kind of a quiet spring for Clint Frazier, and I kind of mean that in a good way. <laughs> you know, there's usually a lot of noise surrounding him. Mm -hmm. he's just, and he's having a pretty good spring, <coughs> but outstanding, not right. overwhelming. Um, I mean, what do you make of what's happening here, the opportunity he has for him? Uh, he's, he's come in, you know, again, one of those guys that came in in really good shape, prepared, ready to go, ready to work. His work has been excellent, um, you know, like like what he's continuing to do on the de defensive side of the ball with the just being kind of entrenched in his routine and his work out there, um, you know, has, has been physically sound to – be able to get regular at bat, so I feel like his build up and his progression has gone well, and um, looking forward to him going out and having a really good year. What does it say to you that he's been able to do this for a month now with without the normal noise that is associated? With it? Well, I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, this is you know we've seen this development and this maturity really over the last couple of years, so. Um, you know, excited about where he's at as a player, as a person, and, um, you know, looking forward to him being, you know, one of our mainstays. Mm -hmm. Eric Boland, please unmute. You have the next question. Eric, do you have any, an update on Clark Schmidt? Still not throwing. He's got just a little bit of discomfort in there still. Um, he's able to do quite a bit upper body and weight room things. Um, but until he is completely asymptomatic, he won't start his throwing program. We're hoping that's imminent and in any day. But until he gets any level of discomfort out of there, he won't start a throwing program. And then uh, relating to Jordan Montgomery, you expressed confidence in him from day one of spring training, really dating back to um, last year. What specifically has stood out about his spring to you so far? Um, well, he he threw really well again yesterday. Uh, he went over and faced uh, a number of Phillies hitters, a lot of their big boys over in Clearwater yesterday, and and threw the ball really well. Um, just just you know being more in control and command of his delivery, repeating his delivery more, throwing more strikes consistently. Um, the uptick and stuff, you know, the curveball and the changeup have always been really good kind of swing and miss pitches for him. But I've really liked how he's um, used both his, actually all three of his fastballs now with the cutter, especially his last two outings. He's really used his cutter really effectively, um, you know, able to use the four seam at the top of the zone, the good two seam fastball. So his his pitch package I feel like right now is really good and, and he's getting more and more consistent uh, with that pitch package um, and, and as a result he's had a really good spring and, and uh, you know feel like he's in a really good spot as we get ready to start the season 
Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, next question to Pete Caldera. Pete. Uh, with Herman and, and Garcia, whoever does not break uh, your rotation to the number five spot, would you anticipate the other guy to be in your bullpen, or would you rather have, have one of those guys length and last for you? Um, yeah. Uh, we view the, both of them as starters. Guest appearance from Mark Feinsand. Mark, please unmute. I see. Hi, hey, Mark. Um, two quick ones. You said you guys have 48 more hours on Bruce. How have you sort of assessed his, his spring? Been really good. Um, you know, one of the things I wanted to do is get him a lot of work at first base and kind of see what that looks like. Um, I've been, I've been, no, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised because, uh, you know, I'd heard, I know he's done that before and he's kind of looked the part, but um, he certainly looked the part to me over there. I feel like he moves naturally over at first base. Um, we know what he can do in the corner outfields. Um, I feel like his, he's healthy. I feel like his swing's in a pretty good place. He's impacted a number of balls for us. Um, so he's shown, I think, everything we could have hoped for uh, when, when we brought him in. And sort of the same question that Pete asked, but on Michael King, do you view him as a starter only, or do you look at him as a guy who could be kind of that swing man in the bullpen? Yeah, he could, be, he, could, he, he could possibly be both. And we, I definitely view him as a starter and, and feel like I feel like Michael King's made a lot of progress from last year into the winter and now into this year. I feel like he's a he's a better pitcher now than he was several months ago. Um, I, I feel like he can be a starter in this league, but I do think there's also a role for him uh, potentially in the bullpen as well. I like where he's at. Given all of the uncertainty about workloads and innings coming off the short season, do you anticipate having to carry more than one long man in your pen? Some other managers have talked about maybe needing more than one of those guys who can give you two, three innings at a time. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I, I guess your definition of long man, um, you know, w w I think you're going to look at our pen and see a number of guys that, you know, can be anywhere from two to four inning type guys. You know, some guys are, you know, starter-ish that are down there. Other guys are, are two inning bullpen guys. So there's a little bit of a difference and a contrast there, and I expect at different times we'll have a little bit of both.